Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Captured by Women. This program is brought to you by Emerald Properties in Cantonment and Woudin, Woudin Le Createur. Before we start today's program, we'll take a recap of our show from last week. But before we do that, uh, we just want to introduce ourselves. My name is Nancy Vukania. I'm a development consultant and I'm here with my co-hosts. Elizabeth Olympio Emmanuel. I'm a restaurateur. I'm Matilda Abahins, a communication specialist. Coming up on this episode, the Minister of Education on Wednesday announced that there will be some 1.2 million students in schools, that is high schools, by September this year when the academic year begins. And at the same time, the second year students will still remain on the double track. We're looking at this issue in detail. On Tuesday, Ghanaian traders locked up shops belonging to Nigerians for engaging in retail trading, something the Ghanaian businesses say is a preserve for the locals. Do they have a case? And what is the position of the law on retail activities in Ghana? On Monday, 29th July 2019, the Finance Minister is expected in Parliament to present the mid-year budget review. Ghanaians are expectant. What taxes would be scrapped, which ones would stay? And our favourites, would the luxury vehicle tax be scrapped? We look forward to this discussion. The spin is up next when we return from the break. Okay. So you can award a maximum of 30 days. Okay. Now any number of days beyond 30 days to 90 days oh. must be sent for approval by what we call the appropriate superior authority, who would be the now general officer commanding Southern Command. Okay. But the Armed Forces regulations allow the detention of any soldier who is suspected of being about to commit an offense or in the process of committing an offense or having been charged for that matter. Okay. So he is in detention, okay. serving the 30 days that the commanding officer has the powers to. Uh, award. Welcome back to the show. This is The Spin. Ladies, we're discussing 1.2 million students joining the SHS scheme on the free HSS scheme come September this year. Unbelievable numbers. Napo is in the hot seat. <laughs> Our minister is in trouble. <laughs> he promised us that this was only going to be for one year. Yes. And the double track is going to go on in the second year as well. Yes. I mean, we're looking at, I mean, from, from the reports that have come, uh, you know, in the news cycles, we're looking at five to seven years. These, facing it out slowly. I, I understand where the, the ministry is coming from because it's a matter of infrastructure right. and funding. Mm. We can't pretend to be ostriches. There are about 766 abandoned and new projects yeah. that are uncompleted. They should have, there was, I think the target was within a year to complete some of these yes, buildings. Absolutely. But then, of course, cash flow, funding, these are uh, time overruns. Project I mean, but, the, this Project goes, but this comes with difficulties for the students and the teachers as well because yeah. it will parents. impact the learning environment. <coughs> Sorry. I, I, I shudder to think about it because previously we've had congestion of the classrooms. Mm. You've had dormitories that also are congested. This, this so, goes to, to ask you know, how this even came about without the prior infrastructure, so at least to a certain extent. I feel as if... Um, our, our politicians are eager to score political points instead of getting things done. Prioritizing you know, education. Prioritizing things like, yeah, education. education. Uh, I, I feel as if some of these infrastructural projects should have been completed before we got into, into the system. Because we're looking at almost seven years now. And who mm. says it's, maybe it go shouldn't further? happen? Yes. It should, but, the seven but, years but then, isn't possible. Again, maybe even if we didn't get the necessary things in place we could have implemented them in, in phases, phases isn't it? Yeah. and um, if, with phases I, we wouldn't have gone through the kind of stress that we are going through as a, a country I, I, you, you get parents who are asking for extra tuition for their uh, yeah because wards. in as much as the ministry says that contact hours will not be lost it's it's happening 
and parents are nervous about their children not meeting their, their syllabus needs mm. and uh, passing the final examinations. What were the results in our mm. last uh, WASI exams? Yeah. We should be looking at though the impact mm -hmm. of this um, double track and how it's affecting it. From what I've read as well, schools that are not involved in the double, double track, track mm where there is a need for enro when enrollment increases and they have capacity to take them on they'll convert the ministry is going to convert the gs into, to, double track, into double track i mean free shs <laughs> is a fantastic policy i have no doubt about it i mean it ensures some sort of equality on a certain level um, no child is left behind and so you, you can know, explore more access, opportunities this, you know yes. I don't know about quality of education at this point, but I mean, it's, it's a fantastic policy. It's a brilliant policy. It's, it's brilliant. But you know. it must be backed but with all the resources. I, I don't even think we looked at how much it was going to cost. So my fear is, can we even sustain this beyond, let's say, 10 years? Mm. You know, it's been done in other countries. In the West, it's done. We should look at making some sacrifices mm. in other sectors depriving ourselves of some luxuries and ensuring that education mm. is getting all that it needs. I think we have even piloted it somehow in the northern region. Okay. Yes, yes. we, we had. That, they have actually. always enjoyed that. Mm. So it's not something new. However, it's been expanded to cover the whole country. To cover and the so whole country. Basically, faces <coughs> would have been better mm. so that by the time within four years you know where you are heading to, you would have yeah. put the necessary strategy mm. in place to be able to um, deal with the things that will crop up from the first phase, deal with them, and then second phase would have been smoother. We mm -hmm. go to the third phase, and then it means that but, you are getting but a you better... You mentioned this because, um, I mean, it's true that we've had this system run up north mm. for a while now. So if we have a, a precedence like this, something to learn from, you know, why do we wait to, to, why don't we do anything to mimic, something to mimic what we already have in the North? Because I know that as part of affirmative action, which, you know, ensures, let's say, equality among um, ethnic minorities and so on, we've had these debates for a while and, and the North has enjoyed some form of, you know, free education for a long time because of that. So if we have that to learn from, why did we have to just jump into this yeah. phase, you know, phase, body, everything in, and then... We have all of these problems because if you look at the news cycle, uh, sometime last year, some students were sleeping on corridors, yeah. you know, uh, getting sick, and, and it, it was it was it was quite it's a miserable attacks. solution. It's a great uh, idea about situation. phasing this out, and we do we do things and we learn from our mistakes, and probably going nationwide right from the onset was a mm. bit over ambitious. Yeah. We should take back a few steps and uh, see if we can go regional. Think about mm. it. And, yeah. uh, Give it a five-year uh, implementation plan. It's not too late. I hope Maybe the minister only, will I mean, hear somebody us. Somebody was of this view that, you know, um, if, if we don't all have to go to boarding, because it looks as if the infrastructural thing is the biggest You are absolutely thing. right. So, so the community like, schools. Community schools. Community schools. And, then, and then the boarding should be sort of a luxury. If but you we want started to pay the community boarding, schools, didn't we? We did. If you want to pay for boarding, you should be made to pay for boarding but it should be more or less uh, day school because it looks like this infrastructure thing is the biggest excuse so for not, you know, str yes. scrapping the double track. Absolutely. You, you, we should be looking at one <laughs> district, one <laughs> community <laughs> high school. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And this, this fund that has just been recently you know, released, but, but we should yeah. World look Bank, at getting a, World a Bank community started school for a that. kind of support yeah. for us yes. to have a community school. We Some have been completed that. and are in the bushes. Maybe mm. we should start thinking but about you, think putting in the necessary yeah. Logistics yes. and, and using them. That makes a lot of sense to me. Getting but I, I good think, land available for we're, that. We're quite set mm. in our ways. I mean, pe when people think of senior high school, they want to go away. It's like <laughs> it's like your first, you know, time out of the out house. Out of the house with you know, freedom. You, you just want to go and be with your friends and you know, living the because people come and they tell you stories about you know being in the boarding house and like, oh, I, I really, I, we're just setting always. Everybody wants to go to boarding school. Being. Well, viewers, this has been the spin. Uh, we've, we've, we've made our views known, and we're hoping that the government takes, you know, some of these views on board and uh, helps us, you know, to make sure that everybody is able to attend senior high school for free in Ghana.
The Finance Minister on Monday 29th July would be presenting the mid-year review of the budget. And a lot of Ghanaians are very expectant. What taxes are supposed to go? What is supposed to stay? What happens to the luxury vehicle tax? These are the things that we are looking forward to and we are expecting the Finance Minister to address in his presentation. In here to discuss it with us is Dr. George Dumfe, Development Economist and Senior Research Fellow with the Centre for Social Policy Studies at the University of Ghana, Legon. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we are very expectant. Before you go into our expectancy, what exactly is our situation with the economy? Because everybody keeps having different views of it. Some think it's going well yeah. and others think it is going nowhere. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Yes, and so when you want to talk about the economy, many have different uh, opinions. Because uh, I have to start by saying things I had, you know. <laughs> but uh, in spite of that, I want to say that uh, some positive uh, achievements have been made. Uh, we normally use what we call microeconomic indicators to measure uh, the health of an economy. Just as an individual, when you go to hospital and the doctor wants to find out whether you are very sick, the very first thing they do is to check your temperature. If your temperature is far over 37 degrees Celsius, then it tells how sick you are. Um, let me say that uh, over the last few years, if you look at the macroeconomic indicators, then you want to say that the Ghanaian economy is recovering as, at a very fast rate. Um, the recovery rate uh, comes from uh, you know, what we call macroeconomic um, indicators, and first of all, I want to talk about the growth. The economy, not, not so long ago, was growing around 3.7%. Today, as we speak, it is growing at 6 percent last year that was the growth rate and so if you were moving around 3.6 and now you are uh, 6.3 then I want to say that that is better talk about the interest rate uh, our policy rate uh, not so long ago used to be 25.5 percent today it has come to 16 percent it is 1.5 percent in US and so if you have moved all the way from 25 to 16 you, 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 you can't say you are not doing well. Another thing that we normally would use to find out whether or not an economy is in what we call fiscal distress is what we call fiscal deficit. Fiscal deficit is the difference between expenditure and revenue. And so as a country, how much revenue did you generate and how much are you spending? The difference between that as a proportion to GDP is what is called fiscal deficit. If you hit 20%, if it, it means your economy is in fiscal crisis, for which reason I mean, let me say that you've already gone to hospital, and when you are, uh, 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 when you go into coma, when you go to coma, that is fiscal crisis. Um, in the recent years, Greece has suffered that that situation, and um, we all heard about it. And a few years ago, Ghana, our fiscal deficit hit 12.1 uh, percent, and so 2015 we had to run to I mean, IMF for them to come and you know regulate things for us. Uh, as a result of what they did, they left just this I mean last April. Uh, as we speak, fiscal deficit in all series, I'm talking about 2006 concern prices, has dropped too significantly from uh, the 9.3 in 2016 to 4.5. So, so it means we are on course. That we means are, that we are on course. So whatever, on whatever that has to go down is actually going down. And what has to go up is going up. But as I, said, well. as I said initially, <laughs> as I said initially, the, the, it hasn't gone to where you and I would feel, feel it. it in the positive. Right. What has yeah. this up and down got to do with the price of kenke in, 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 and, in, fish. and fish in Abu Seu Kain? It, it does a lot. Mm. It does a lot. So some of them you will not feel it. For example, the policy rate that I talked about, if you have it at 16%, it means that uh, that's the rate at which Bank of Ghana is going to lend to the commercial banks, for right. which reason they're also supposed to reduce their lending rates. Right. And we, it is rightly so that the uh, lending rate has also gone down for over 10 Percent, percent, I mean, 10 percentage points in the last few months, I mean, last few years. And so that tells you that if uh, some time ago you had gone to bank to take a loan of 100 million and you were going to pay interest of 40 million, mm. that was uh, the average lending rate, today you are paying about 27 million. Yeah. You know, so that is significant. That you could use sense. that money to do quite a lot. Mm. We are talking about um, inflation that used to hover around 15 percent. Uh, just at the end of last month, um, inflation had dropped to 9.1 percent. What does that mean? What it means is that if I go to market today to buy a bag of rice at 100 cities, mm. and we sustained inflation at the rate of 9.1 for the 12 months, when next I go to buy the bag of rice, 
uh, it will be 109. Mm. But if inflation is uh, at 15, mm -hmm. I will buy it at all. 115. Right. That's what it means. Is yeah. the city stability sustainable? Um, I would say uh, yes and no. Is it stable right now? Um, it, it, it's it's um, <laughs> relatively. 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 So that's because from Re where you say picking it, there's supposed to be a stability. Yeah, you know, city, city, the strength of the city normally is determined by the, the strength of your economy. Oh. Um, Manufacturing. We always go out there to, to, to import, to come and consume, mm. right? And so, assuming uh, everything we need is produced in this country, nobody will need. There'll be to no forex. deficit more. Okay, less. so nobody would uh, rush to follow dollars mm. to exchange cities for dollars to go and import. Buy, mm. Yeah, and so until this economy begins to produce enough, uh, the, I mean, CD will continue to so be in the situation where it's I mean, it finds itself. But let me end here and say that something positive has happened for the uh, for almost 20 years, about two decades. We have never recorded trade surplus in 2017. We did. Ghana, Ghana recorded yes. trade surplus. In yes. fact, last year, too, we recorded so twice trade in surplus. A row. What it means is that mm. your, your export the value is now higher yeah, than your import, import value. value. But mm. unfortunately, it happened not, not because you are manufacturing so much to export, it's because our uh, oil prices yes, have gone up and we are also producing more oh, oil. Oh. <laughs> you made a point, your final statement about the manufacturing where that would uh, determine the, uh, the stability of the currency. Last year, the tax for manufacturers was 5%. I think they are looking to have a review, hoping for a review in Monday's uh, budget, asking for 1%. Do you think this will uh, be realized? Um, yes, uh, you know, I know the manufacturers would want it to go that way. You know, one reason why we are not doing very well, and sometimes people will say that, I mean, this says you people don't teach what uh, the industry needs. That is not true. You know, currently, we are told that uh, every year, over 85,000 people leave the tertiary, I mean, institutions, and when they come, our government has the ability to employ only 5,000 of them, leaving mm. over 8,000 to struggle. And sometimes it takes, on average, eight years, nine years for, to get a job. you know. And so it's not because of what is happening. It's because the manufacturing sector it's almost dead. It's because the agricultural sector is not doing so well. That's where the manufacturing sector is doing so well. And when I say that, let me say that last year the manufacturing sector grew by 9%, and that is one of the highest we've ever experienced in this country since 1957. And so that was highly, you know, I mean, remarkable. We want to see, I mean, manufacturing sector doing so well in that way. When it does so well, um, it means that most of the things that we would have gone outside to import, we're going to uh, you know, produce them here, and that will mean that CD is going to stabilize. What is more, as you do that, you are also creating jobs, yeah. you know. And so the manufacturing sector must work. And let me say that uh, a study that we did pointed out that if uh, 10 Ghanaians um, establish, you know, any enterprise today, in the next five years, uh, six of them are going to collapse. And then, and then only four will survive. The four that will survive in the next 10 years, two of the four would also collapse. And that is very bad. You know why? Be, uh, the main reason why manufacturing uh, you know, companies are not doing well, num number one, as you mentioned, is taxes. Mm. Number two is uh, uh, unsustainable, I mean, uh, unreliable supply of energy, the doom so, doom so. Mm. And another one is that cost of energy, electricity. Mm. You know? And so these are, these are the reasons. And so um, taxes, yes. You know, Ghana, quite unfortunately, because our economy is highly informal, about 88% is informal. Yes. And so it is very difficult for government to find people, uh, uh, for them to pay tax. Yeah. And so the few who have paid are always being burdened. This so, scenario where the last um, uh, budget, government reduced taxes for importation on, on certain products, where there was a 50% benchmark uh, reduction, where some of these goods are produced in Ghana. So manufacturers are saying, these items we can produce here. Why do you give them a 50% discount when then that's unfair competition? Do not give uh, a, such a, a tax relief for importation on things that we can produce here so that our manufacturing industry can survive. Yeah, that is very intelligent uh, suggestion to make. Yes, so tax relief to... to the manufacturing companies, yes, they especially, especially when they are starting. 
you know, so they can, they can you know, grow in, in order to compete fairly with, uh, you know, the um, imports. Uh, my only worry is that in, in 1960s, Kwame Nkrumah did the same thing. Mm. And we, we used to call them infant industry. Yep. And as we speak, some of them are still infant. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't grow. <laughs> they didn't grow, so that's the problem. That's the problem. Otherwise, uh, um, it is very, very important we give them tax relief or we, we reduce taxes that they pay so that in that way they are able to grow to be, to be competitive. Okay. Yeah. So, so apart from the tax reliefs that we've looked at, which other areas do you expect government to address in the coming budget review? Yeah, so talking about the areas, um, um, in the budget, for example, government said that uh, they, they were expecting inflation, inflation to, 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 to be around 8%. Mm. You know, and uh, I looked at it and I said, wow, this is, this is not going to be possible. Because, uh, I mean, for, since uh, 2012, we've never seen anything around 8%. Mm. And so I expect the finance minister, for example, to tell us that uh, the target was too uh, high for, for them to meet. As we speak, mm. yeah, inflation has dropped to 9.1% anyway, and that still remains lowest um, I, after... In fact, uh, January it was 9%, and the January 9% was the lowest since December 2012. And so if uh, we are expecting it to be eight, why not? But I don't think uh, uh, we, we, uh, we will meet it. And another thing that I expect the finance minister to come and tell us something about is the expenditure. Mm. Uh, they projected to spend over 70 billion Ghana cities and also projected to, you know, um, generate over 60 billion, uh, uh, you know, um, revenue. And if I look at what is, at what is happening, um, I don't think uh, we are getting there. And so I expect the finance minister to revise the expenditure downwards. So okay. because, because we are not doing enough with the, I mean, even though the, um, the revenue, I must say they are doing well, but it's not, I don't think we will meet the, the, the set target. And if you don't meet the set target and you maintain the expenditure, you are, you are going to increase the fiscal deficit. And if they are saying that they want the fiscal deficit to be 4.2% of GDP, then they have to revise yeah, the expenditure that was. The, 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 the issue with public debt has to do with, you know, the bailouts that they had to do for mm -hmm. the seven local banks. I mean, that was quite a bit of money, mm -hmm. just over, over 9 billion, just under 10 billion mm -hmm. CDs. Don't you think that that had an impact on how much we spent, uh, you know, as compared to how much we've, we've robbed in as revenue? Okay, so, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, d not too directly. Mm. Not too directly. So when we talk about the public debt, uh, it's all about uh, what uh, we've been, you know, um, as we said, fiscal deficit. And so if you spend more than your revenue, mm. there is a gap that must be filled. Right. And so that gap is what will compel governments to go out there and borrow, sometimes externally or domestically. Uh, when we take such resources, then it adds up to your total accumulated debt. And the debt, what is very bad about it is that if you have it today, uh, tomorrow, you have to make, you know, room to pay. I mean, to pay for it. And right. let me paint a scenario. Last mm. year, we government of Ghana spent uh, almost um, about 60 billion. I think uh, no, they revised it. I it have to be 60.2, and later they revised it to 55 billion. So Ghana government spent 55 billion. It may interest you to know that 18 billion of this had to be spent on. Uh, interest payments. Interest payment, that is the loans we, Kwame Nkrumah, took uh, all the way to this side, <laughs> right? And yeah. so, uh, uh, today, if you take it, uh, it, it doesn't affect you, but uh, it will affect the future, you know, governance. And so, I'm sure... Uh, oh, so, uh, so, what did HIPIC do for us then? Uh, yeah, you are very right. Yeah. HIPIC time. HIPIC time. Mm -hmm. We were, uh, the total debt stock at the time stood at now $6.4 billion. Mm. And at that time, Ghana government was using 51% of the total tax revenue in servicing debt. debt. So that, that, that left only 49, you know, that was to not enough. And uh, after you pay um, remuneration, you are left with nothing. Right. And so it was very serious. And so we went HIPIC. When we went HIPIC, unconditionally, mm. 4 billion of the loan was written off, leaving only okay. 2.4. And okay. the 2.4, and you see, at that time, Debt to GDP ratio, sometimes I don't want to talk about the nominal figures. They are very deceptive. <laughs> very we, we use what we call debt to GDP ratio. That talks about, uh, um, I mean, I, do, do you have what it is, the strength to pay the debt? Right. And we are saying that if your debt to GDP ratio goes over 
70 percent it means that your debt is unsustainable that's yes. the term we use and if your debt is unsustainable it means you can't pay no. and if you, uh, or if you have to pay it means that you have to stop other payments other important payments in order to pay your debt and that will bring more hardship to your people yeah. and so 19 uh, 2000 our debt to gdp ratio uh, was uh, 182 percent wow. we had gone we far over far. the 70 percent threshold wow. and and when we <laughs> when we subscribe to uh, i mean the hepic uh, immediately they wrote off for after we left we completed the uh, we, we reached into the comp uh, they call it completion decision oh. point they wrote off four billion leaving 2.4 and that brought our debt to gdp ratio to 32 okay. percent by 2008 and so that was a time we had we should have talked about ghana with our aid because you had enough fiscal space from 32 to 70 you had enough fiscal space to maneuver exactly to so at this point do we have enough fiscal space we don't to we don't because we've been, we've been so reckless yeah. with our expenditure we we, <laughs> we 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 started borrowing left and right yeah. and before we could say jack eh, our debt had jumped from 2.4 billion all the way to 28 billion oh. and, and and the debt to gdp ratio in 2016 was 73.1 yeah. percent 2016. Yeah, so the, the 32 mm. you move it again over over 70. Uh, so since 20, um, 2004 i mean 2014 ghana went into hippic again because the moment uh, your debt becomes unsustainable if hippic were yeah, there you would have subscribed would, yeah. but now we don't have it anymore and so from 2014 that had been the situation and if you look at last year and things are, uh, are still we are still in danger if you look at last year and all the figures that i'm turning out are the uh, the old series mm. uh, 2016 uh, constant prices we shouldn't forget that we, we, our economy has been rebased yes. in september last year so and so and so the figures are different yes. i'm using 2006 constant prices i mean so uh, viewers <laughs> uh, yeah so if you use the 2006 constant prices that, that i'm talking about mm. um our our dust situation now Sands at 70.7 percent, so we are 0 0.7 uh, deep into the danger zone. Well, what did uh, they promise us last year in the budget? Yeah. So, so, so that is a uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, <laughs> when they said 70, yeah, when they said 70.7, mm -hmm. that is including financial sector bailout you talked about. Okay. Without the financial sector bailout, mm -hmm. it would have been 66.5. So we are still okay. Yeah, that and 66. Point five would have taken you out of danger. Right. Now, if you use the rebate figures, then it is even better because now it is a uh, uh, fifty-seven point two percent of GDP. Oh. But if you use the, uh, I don't want Gavin to look at that. If you look at that, you know you think that you are doing you, well, and you go and, then, and take yeah. more. Yeah. Now, yes, uh, if you look at where they want to get us to, um, oh. they, we we looking at something in the region of uh, fifty percent of. Uh, I mean GDP. What are you expecting the, on Monday? Um, think? I, I I think uh, if they are they are they are, they are on course uh, in achieving the debt to GDP mm. ratio, they are on yeah. But but in nominal terms, the debt had ballooned to 198 billion. But no. it is but said to be more of a domestic debt yeah, yeah, than but, a foreign debt. No, that that is a, so that is there's a uh, that's why I don't want to look at the uh, you know the nominal figures. Mm. There they, there's a great uh, you know disingenuity mm. if you follow it. Why am I saying this? Uh, uh, when 2016 ended, Ghana's total debt stock uh, stood almost around uh, $28 uh, billion, right? And um, that one CD equivalent was $122 billion at Ghana cities. Wow. Now, assuming uh, since 2016, mm -hmm. Ghana government had not taken loan, yes. and our debt uh, stock would have gone up to $148 billion. Would you say that is debt? You know, because uh, now CD has depreciated. I don't understand that. No, no, no. What I'm talking about yeah. is that when your debt was uh, total debt in dollars was 28 billion. Yes. At the time, one dollar was four cities, 30 pesos. Yes. And so in Ghana cities, your total debt stock was 122. Yeah. So assuming Ghana government has not taken anything at all, mm -hmm. our debt stock today would have gone to 148 because, because CD now rates. you need one dollar right. for five cities, right. 30 pesos. Right. And so uh, the debt stock had moved from 122. Go up anyway. 148. Yes. So from 122 to 148, that gap is depreciation of the city. Yes. Okay. It's not that Ghana government has gone for a new money. Right. It's depreciation. So but, people but might misunderstand. Exactly. It. Yes. Exactly. That's so when people talk about the nominal figures, uh, it, uh, it becomes a problem. Yes. In economics, if you use nominal figures, it's very we say, sensational. Yeah. When you use yeah. We say figures. we say you are suffering from money illusion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you you you'll be tempted to 
include uh, uh, some of all these yes. things. And it is very important when we, we, we use rare figures or you use debt to GDP ratio. Okay. Mm. So would the yeah. tax on um, luxury vehicles likely uh, that's what's important come off. to us? Yeah, so yeah, luxury, yeah. So, yeah. so uh, let me say that last year uh, it, it came about because our Ghana government at the time wanted to spend about 62 billion mm. and um, the, the tax revenue, they were looking at, uh, I mean, I'm talking about domestic uh, you mm. know, revenue generation, they were looking at something around 50, one there about them. When they were not they getting that, yeah. immediately they, they were looking for <laughs> way out. And that's, and that's how, how they call it that's how. That means. <laughs> but, uh, but I don't think uh, their definition of luxury, mm. uh, they got it right. Quite right. Because, because uh, if I'm using a car, uh, that is very old, 20 year old car. Yes. <laughs> okay, it, so you, we, would, would you recommend a total scrapping or a review of the law? Um, you see, most of these cars that they are even talking about, they are government cars. Okay, all so right. Government cars. And so you see, uh, we are not getting so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so well, on that note, we'll have to say a very big thank you to you, Dr. Uh -huh. George Donfe, uh, Development Economist and Senior Research Fellow with the Center for Social Policy Studies at the University of Ghana. Thank you so much for coming. We look forward to Monday and what the Finance Minister would give to us. Thank you very much for that. There is tension between the Ghanaian and Nigerian traders at the Opera Square in Accra. How do we bring a finality to this problem? That's coming up next on Captured by Women. Welcome back from the break. I'm Elizabeth Olympia Emanuel. On Tuesday, Ghanaian traders locked up shops belonging to Nigerians for engaging in retail trading. Something the Ghanaian businesses say is a preserve for the locals. A similar action by their counterparts at Swami in Kumasi also resulted in shops being ransacked. Do they have a case? And what is the position of the law on retail activities in Ghana? Joining us today is the national president of the Ghana Union of Traders Union Association, Dr. Joseph Obain. Dr. Obain, you're welcome to Captured by Women. Thank you. It seems this um, issue is focused on only the Nigerian traders. Is this the issue? It's never the issue. Um, as a matter of fact, um, we have been living peacefully with um, our brothers from Nigeria. And if you look at the history, um, even at Kaolin, when you go to Kumasi, we have Akutiali, Alaba, and all that. These are all predominantly Nigerians. The houses that we, um, we live in at Opera Square and all that, and um, Okenshi, most of them belong to um, Nigerians. And they are much Ghanaians as we are. Those people that we have lived, they vote and do everything. And Ghana have shown a lot of hospitality, and everybody should no notice that. So we, we love Nigerians, we've been there, especially our brothers, the Yorubas, they have been very, uh, a very good example. They are very <laughs> lovely, they are very <laughs> pleasant, yes. and we've lived with them all these years and all that. What we are talking now is about the law. And it's not targeted on somebody to even leave Ghana. We are talking about somebody who have trespassed and come into the retail um, a business where it is the preserve of the Ghanaian by the laws no, of the At what there point is... did you see a trespass? Because this is not the first time that you've had foreigners, not just Nigerians, mm. foreigners in retail business. We can name different nationalities involved in it. Yeah. Um, like we've been saying, we started this during the Nabude peace time. So if you calculate them, we are talking about 18 years now. Mm. So... From that time, because this thing had been there, and we were very comfortable. At that time, the numbers haven't grown. We have a, people are even saying that we are afraid of competition. Even among ourselves, we do competition among ourselves. Yeah. And before then, we were uh, having a very serious competition with a bigger giants like Glamour, GBO Levant, PZ, and all the kind. And so competition is not the issue. Yeah. It's about um, people foreigners taking our space, the space, the limited space for trading, the area that we have 
uh, make the goodwill. Some of the areas people started, our grandmothers started, people were not buying and they've created the goodwill and it has become a, a market for us. And this is the space that the law provides for the Kenyan. But business to say, um, the foreign mm. businesses that come in do not properly register and go through the GIPC registration process. Exactly. Because there is an act with GIPC Act 865 Section 27 that clearly says foreign enterprises should not engage in the listed uh, activities. Exactly. So if you, uh, you, you have to um, define um, a market then if care is not taken, you even define it for, to cover the whole of Ghana. Mm -hmm. So right. then there was an, a, a window of opportunity oh. that if uh, somebody want to uh, do even retailing, uh, ShopRite is doing retailing, Kuala is doing retailing, um, Mazamat, Mercom, um, Glamour and all that, they are all doing retailing. So the law, the framers of the law um, sought um, that anybody who come into the retail sector will then be doing something like a bigger strata. That's why they say that you have to bring in one million US dollars and then employ 20 skilled labor. So, you mean in terms of local content? In terms of the, the locals that you have to employ. Okay. So um, the framers have in mind that um, whoever is coming into the retail space then is coming for the bigger um, uh, structures no, like no, no. So, so, but we have you, you've managed um, the situation to a certain point, and you think that your space has been overtaken. What is your link with the trade ministry and the GIPC to ensure that this space that is being taken is brought back to what it ought to be without necessarily an uproar? Yeah. We, we've done this, and if you recall, so many task forces have been set in the past. Mm -hmm. About um, three task forces for which I was a co-chairman. Mm -hmm. And then when this one was about to be set, we, we said that enough of the, um, the task force because uh, 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 it's a waste of time. Because whatever evidence you go and collate, you do not um, work on it. And so... Um, we, we've done that, and then they gave. A, they told me to give a roadmap. Uh, you mean the, the Ministry of Trade. Okay. Uh -huh. So I said that we are traders. It's not our duty to enforce laws. So the institutions that are mandated to do this should do their work in a subtle manner, where we be at the background and do our work. So, my, my, my worry, not to cut you anything. Yeah. My worry is that I mean this has gone on for what some odd eighteen years. Why now? What does that say about our economy? Does that mean that business is booming and now, you know, everybody wants a piece of, of what's going on in Okainshi or in, in Kaolin or Tito Lane or in Swami? Oh, is, oh, is, is, that, is that what it means? All that it means is mm. that if you, you recall, people have, uh, for about 10 years, people have been saying, Yentwadia, Yentwadia, you don't buy. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not that, because the space is so limited. Ghana is limited, our population is so, and then the influx of foreigners are coming to compete and all that. So the limited um, customers that we have is being shared mm. by this, and so it's taking all that we have. And people, they are, they are again doing the, um, the hawking and all that, mm. which is not supposed to. Um, to be done. So they are taking it all. And then um, if you talk about the Chinese, um, you realize that most of them have come and they are uh, manufacturers. So we are competing directly with even manufacturers. Right. Because there is manufacturers representative who are coming. Those, those goods that we will go and buy, mm -hmm. they, they are, they are, bringing, it they are bringing it here mm -hmm. and you are competing with the manufacturer directly. Okay. And you see, it, it, uh, if economically um, we have to, this is the way this thing is pulling even our local manufacturing mm. even down. Okay. It's not but, even But helping. related to that is the online marketing. Yeah. And you'd have online marketing that would in itself bring you competition. So how do you <laughs> brace yourself up for this? And who, and who, do, and who, who do you and hold? Who? Because there's a physical person or physical persons, which are the foreigners, mm. that at this moment you are trying to um, deal with. How do you brace yourself now for a system that is now taking on online marketing? And who is doing the online marketing? We are doing, I have online. Mm. 
I have the structures there. It's modernity. We can't do away with technology. Uh, technology. And and so everybody is taking advantage, and most of us are also no, in no, that. But the question is, um, you, you know, you are looking at the foreigners as in, you, you think those you are you seeing see. them, yeah. mm. but what about those, those you, you can't, can't see? see? Because there are businesses thriving online that are not mm. registered, are not no, paying taxes, even. they are not Ghanaian, mm. and they are making good use of our local market, of the same consumers you we are looking at that you are saying are limited who is in control of that I, I don't know the laws that control because if somebody is doing online business then it shouldn't be something that is not uncontrolled because there should be tax payment even there mm -hmm. so you can you cannot say that somebody can just roll in out there mm -hmm. and, and nobody is controlling it. once there's control uh, there is a way um, I'm, so, I'm, I'm interested in, yeah. in what happened on ground on yeah. Wednesday. You were there, yeah. and um, apparently you had a big role to play, yeah. you know, in, in all that happened. It would be good to tell us, you know, what happened then on Wednesday and what the atmosphere is now as, as we speak. Yeah, for what, uh, people's um, tempers um, is uncontrollable. And um, for me, as a leader, I cannot do it alone. That's where... Um, and the national security and the government itself should, be, it should take this thing serious. Because mm -hmm. this thing keeps reoccurring. Yeah. We have about 13 re red flagged areas, Abusokan included. Mm -hmm. Abusokan is waiting to explode. Swami so, will wow. go again. Um, yeah, we have a Sunyani, Sunyani just called. Because they have done it before, and then the, the, the regional minister uh, took police um, to go and open forcefully. Open. Yeah. Now they call, they say that they want to face the police, so they will do it and during whatever they are doing. This is how serious the whole thing is going. And because now it's gotten up here. We've, we've talked, we have been very civil in our demand. Mm -hmm. Since about 18 years, we haven't hurt a fly. The Nigerians themselves, whenever they have problems, they are almost all our friends. Don't forget that we're also going to Nigeria. Most of us even still even go to Nigeria, Nigeria and buy goods from there. Mm -hmm. We do not stay there. When we talk so, so trading, the thing, this, so this the is what trading is. The issue is they're yeah. staying to trade. Uh, exactly. The Ecowas pro Protocol says that mm. we have to do business together freely without mm. any hindrances. We have to move around so that we can all enjoy the about 390 million population that we have, mm. that we enjoy together. So uh, what, what could have been better than this? So the, the problem is the work permits, the residence, and suddenly, the, the paperwork so that makes you legitimate. That is yeah. failing us. Really. Uh, that is failing us. And so uh, uh, people have misconstrued the whole thing. Nigerian government has uh, uh, repatriated four Ghanaians mm. on the basis that they have um, um, had infractions on their local laws. Mm. It means that the ECOWAS protocol have Cutting its confines yes. through which it operates, the tenets of it should be respected. And that's what we are not doing. And that if we understand, that's why I, I, I don't understand ECOWAS commission itself. They failed us. Mm. And, they, and they are even biased. I, I dare to say they have been very biased and always in favor of Nigeria. Let me tell you, the ETLS said that we should, um, the, uh, our manufactured goods should move freely to various countries without any okay. hindrances. Mm. They came about, they came with a shortlisted 41 items that these items would never enter Nigeria and after now it has never entered. ECOWAS has never reprimanded Nigeria. We won't sit down for a, a union or for a, a, a protocol to be abused by a big boy. But this okay. is, this so, is so at this mm. point, what is your link between the GIPC and the trade ministry because there's also the school of thought that says that there's the need for you to review upwards the requirements for you to be able to trade in Ghana. Because that, that, that school of thought thinks that it will be a way also to deter uh, foreign uh, trade in retailing. Yeah, at first the capital requirement was 300,000 and it was... Um, a very reasonable, and then with uh, uh, dollars, dollars. Okay. and then you have to employ ten Guineans, and even that, they were not complying with. It's a lot of money. And there, money there was a lot of. Uh, 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 well, the three hundred thousand uh, is inclusive of your goods, your goods, and your and everything, everything that you the use goods in. that you bring, okay. and all yes. that. And if uh, uh, some people have complied and they are working, 
And so uh, those who have not been able to comply with, should, should let, it means that you cannot go because the ECOWAS protocol that helps you to bring your goods freely to sell is there. Mm. Is it possible, considering that Nigeria falls within ECOWAS, um, that our government can restructure policy only for ECOWAS citizens because what's happening here is the GIPC law says all foreign enterprises, the minimum capital investment is a million dollars equivalent. Can that go back to the 300,000 perhaps with the joint venture and a Ghanaian partner and we, we implore upon government to enforce this um, target? Do you think that will solve the problem? Yeah, um, don't also forget that the Ghana Investment Promotion Authority is driving investment. So their, their, their whole, whole mandate is to drive investment to the um, required area of investment. Now, investment is um, technological, what is uh, uh, required of technological know-how mm -hmm. and capital. Mm -hmm. Listen, that's where investment is. We don't drive investment to, to, retail. to retail. We have seen that they can do it for 18 years. Uh -huh. So we are calling, we are going to call um, the Destiny Day demonstration within three months if the government From hasn't now. done anything. Yeah, the okay. Destiny Day the demonstration means that uh -huh. if one law, the law that protects the common trader, that uh, is being uh, forced to pay all taxes and all that the other taxes the laws in taxes works for us mm. but the the law that protests us is it's not, not working, working for you. it means that it's going to nullify this law is going to nullify all other laws we are not going to pay taxes we are going That's to pile up daring. we are going to pile up the vat invoices and burn them the destiny day demonstration means that they're going to be total chaos we are going to close the shops first place and this is going to solve the problem, and within three months, we are going to see that. Thank you. Thank you very wow. much, Dr. Yeah. Joseph Obe. <laughs> yes, we are very Thank glad you. to have had you here on Captured by Women. Thank you. So Viewers, the shops are back opened, but for a very brief time. The call is now at the doors of government to ensure that the laws are enforced and implemented and local traders protected. We'll be back from the break. Yeah, welcome back, viewers. And this is still captured by women on this lovely Saturday afternoon. And we have quite had uh, the, the interesting discussion today. Uh, today was exceptionally exciting for mm. me. Uh, you know, I had a lot of highs and lows when it came to the budget and so on and so forth. What, what, what were your high points, ladies? Mine is with Buta. Okay. and the destiny day and the fact that they are looking at closing shops That's and taking other one. actions it's mm. a very big one and um, government will have to do a lot quite a yeah. lot education mm. enforcement of the laws perhaps deal with the uh, guta the nigerians the chinese all the foreign traders let them understand the reason why they have to adhere mm. to it because as a country we we seek to host the african free trade area right. and that means that we are carving a niche for ourselves in terms of image you, you you can't go out there and look like someone who is hostile. Yes. It's a way to integrate the markets. It's a way to get the foreign investment trade, um, investment, uh, foreign direct investments into the country. And so it would be very good for us to work it out pr before the three months come mm -hmm. so that the tempest would uh, lower yeah, quite a little. Yeah. Oh. Yes. We, we, we had a passionate Dr. Obeying who's been leading these traders union is he's done a marvelous mm. job he was mm. i don't know about opening reopening the shops because from what he's explained to us and the the nature of what the foreigners are involved in it's as little as businesses that you need two thousand cities to open yeah. up and that is direct That's unfair competition, unfair competition mm. to yes. local traders right. and um this is government's take Laws are meant to be enforced. Yeah. Someone is sleeping on the job. Please protect the local traders. Yeah, this is not fair. It's long, not right. Really. Mm. We want ECOWAS to work. We want our GIPC to work. There must be some middle ground somewhere, mm. but it must be lawful. It was, it was really an insightful discussion with yeah. Dr. Bing. And um, Destiny Day. <laughs> we hope we don't get to that day. I think day Destiny because Day did it for everybody. Ministry of Trade, government, <laughs> yeah. the law enforcement must 
take action. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but it's 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 also as if um, you know they're sort of daring government to act, and and sometimes you know it has to come to this. But I think that we have to you know assure our Nigerian brothers and sisters that you know what this is not about you. No, this it's about really following the It's actually yeah. about just adhering to the to rules and the regulations. To That's, our laws. It's compliance. You know, yeah. Because ECOWAS it's allows you something, you know, but you can't you really stretch it and take it for granted because, I mean, it looks like um, our traders have really had it up to or here. Or probably education uh, this, as well. Maybe yeah. the foreigners don't know about the GIPC right. law. Mm. So there must be a lot more education at mm. our frontiers and mm. the borders they must have gipc must have flyers yeah. or a little information something so that tell it tells people this is know. what you need to have to be able to trade in this mm. sector or this is a no-go area simple diagrams but Eliza, you know most of them are also aware that they can't just remain here after 90 days i think that is quite clear that and is it's clear. out there i mean that so they, but they known. take advantage of the fact that no one's chasing anybody because once you enter no one's checking your bar, papers they, yeah. No one's, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah no you see, the, the, the bad thing about it is that once you start enforcing it is as though you are targeting a certain group of people yes, and yes. so for us the enforcement of the law should be it because if we had enforced it you wouldn't have a lot of them right. in retail as we speak because they would have been in wholesale mm. and you wouldn't have to enforce yeah. a law for Wholesale someone to fine. think you are hunting the person Wholesale out yeah. of the country. But, but, but Eliza, you make a clear. strong point when you say maybe we should look at a different set of rules for, you know, ECOWAS because we have yes. a, a sort of Because treaty. it's ECOWAS, it must yeah. work. Yeah. I mean, ECOWAS is economic. And then have something else yeah. for the other yes. group of people, people, you know, from elsewhere. Yeah. I, think, I think that's a strong point. I think that makes we a lot We should sense. look at it. Like yeah. the EU has it for the EU. Yes. The, the US has it for their states. Mm. It's and something we should work And also perhaps a a good cooperation amongst the trade ministries in the sub region yeah, because if yeah, we yeah, have yeah. that and the traders are educated well sensitized then they know that this is your limit this is where you start Precisely. this is where you yeah. stop because once you have a task force that itself has lost interest in continually <laughs> yeah. going there then you have a problem M mr Abe mentioned about 41 products that nigeria has the list, clearly that refused list to allow to accept, yeah. accept Ghanaian. um items entering Nigeria. That's, that's just it's unfair. Right. It's unfair. It's unfair. Trade it's unfair. We, we just need to be conscientious mm. of these things and mm. uh, get it working. Mm. The law must work, unfortunately. Maybe what about this um, luxury? Tax. The luxury tax. The luxury vehicle levy. <laughs> that, that, Government that's the needed dream money. of the Ghanaian. <laughs> they set up the law. I mean, we hope that on Monday it is scrapped because you know, but, it is really hard. Yeah, but you know what? I think this whole thing comes about because, you know, they were, you know, we're all worrying, going, don't go and borrow anymore. Everybody was on their backs. You're borrowing too much. You're borrowing too much. Public debt is too high. So they're like, okay, so now we want to make money domestically. So they had to find, if, if you like, a uh, quack, quack, quack means of, you, you know, know but, getting but, the money but, somehow. But, but you know, you know this was one of you know, them. we continue to question the luxury tax, mm. vehicle tax, because is it the fuel consumption that makes makes it a luxury basis. car, or yeah. is is it the specs of the car? They need to come back I mean, with a that, that, new <laughs> definition. And, and yes. speaking, that it it's very comfortable cars, and uh, you have the yeah. trucks that you know you see the comfortable I've car with everything that comes. Cars that have just been packed now to to rot because they said, look, I'm not paying a thousand. CDs yeah. for a roadworthy or two thousand or, or, or more, <laughs> or even more. Yeah. For, for this old more. you know yeah. uh, banger I'm not doing it so it's I think it's a, a lot of people are, are unable to afford more, uh, and just because you have this car then you know, you have with, to with government getting tax I mean mm -hmm. eighty percent of our uh, trade is informal trade yeah there are people doing thriving on big businesses yeah. on online, mm -hmm. working from their homes. So, and mobile money is making a lot of money. Just so, able to unable to capture the GRA that. should be yeah. able to look at how to get their tax, even from Momo. That should you be know. what they should be looking they at. They should be looking <laughs> at that. They should go online and see which businesses are not registered, which are not yeah. paying tax, yeah. and get that. I mean, yeah. those are the informal trades. People are doing active business. Yeah. Well, viewers, Capture it. as you can see, <laughs> you've been Free captured. <laughs> as you can see, you know, we, we have had a lot of fun today and we hope that, um, you know, you kept in tune with us, especially with the numbers, you know, when it came to the budget. We're looking forward to some good news on Monday, especially for the luxury tax uh, uh, review and, uh, and everything else that the finance minister has for us. It's, it's been really great. And then uh, we're going to have to say goodbye from all of us here, from Matilda.
from myself, from, from Eliza, and from the whole crew here at Emerald Properties. Um, this program is sponsored by Woodin, Woodin the Creator. Do go to any of the Woodin shops around, buy something that's already made, or buy a fabric and make something beautiful for yourself and your family. And uh, we will see you next week. This has been captured by Renee.